Oh wow, what a crazy random stunt suggestion with a generous amount of time. I did it though, I moved. You guys know I'll do anything for the stunts. Do it for the stunts, that's what I always say. But something's wrong here. This room feels empty and vacuous. Good vocab, I know. It's missing a certain wave painting. That's better. I hope none of you guys have attachment issues because we're not gonna see the old wave painting until after summer when I move again. But it's okay, don't cry, you little bitch. You need to stay strong and tough. And today, I think I got someone who can help. Life doesn't give a fuck about you. Everyone who you're crying to your problems about doesn't really care. You're a fat, ugly sack of shit. I can get you a machine gun, I can get you an army tank, I can get you 10 big booty cuties. I'm gonna have to try and do this video without getting my massive cock all over the camera. As soon as a fucking black person starts touching alcohol, they all start getting out of control and rowdy. So I'll walk around my house with a sword. Andrew Tate. This guy has been the talk of the online town recently in the alpha male discourse. Guns, alcohol, fast car, women. This guy's a beast. And I wanted to talk about him because as you guys know, if you see my alpha con coverage, I'm the most qualified for the job. They call me the alpha of alphas the king of the kingdoms, the dominatrix of dominatrixes. I don't think that last one was as cool as I thought it was. There's so much to discuss when it comes to talking about Andrew Tate that it's hard to know where to start. Perhaps we can investigate Hustlers University, a collection of low effort courses Tate sells for $50 a month subscription, yet pays other non-credentialed people to teach. But by he's a did a good job covering that. Or maybe we could talk about the War Room, the $4,500 glorified group chat that Tate also sells, but Danny Gonzalez did a good job covering that. Or maybe we can go into the weeds and talk about the alleged sexual traffic and kidnapping claims recently, but Danny Gonzalez did a good job covering. Danny, could you stop talking about stuff and try to make a video about? No, I wanted to keep this video content driven because maybe you're like me and having a blues clue as to who this guy is and why everyone's talking about him. Well, to quickly catch you up on his sudden popularity, it's because almost everything out of this guy's mouth is just some insane shit. Oh, you'll notice I'm animated when I talk. I move my hands all the time. You can watch any of my Tate speeches, I move my hands. If you watch me on Twitter or Instagram, I move my hands when I talk. I'm always moving my hands when I talk. So he just likes to move his hands around. But now it's something I've learned because being animated makes you more capable of assassination. You see, a typical motivational speaker might say moving your hands around could be a good way to show confidence or to maybe be more expressive. But Andrew Tate teaches it as a way to assassinate your enemies without them expecting it. And I gotta say, I've already added it into my kit. Yeah, so anyway, yesterday me and the boys were just walking around and stabbed. And that's when I said, look, I'm just gonna hang around the beach today, put my hands behind my back and See, you might think I'm your friend telling you a nice story and now you just got shot several times with my hidden akimbo pistols. You feel quite silly now, huh? And dead? Cause I like the idea of tactical surprise and this is why. I'm always moving my hands. And so far, I am hooked by this man. What other secrets doth Sir have to spill? Well, I wanted to find out, so I started watching all the content I could get my animated hands on. Watch out, I could strike at any moment. And what I discovered on my quest was an infinite supply of more absurdity. Cat owners are dickheads. You see, the great thing about Andrew Tate's content as a YouTuber making a video on him is I don't have to look very hard for a contentious clip or him being dumb. It's every sentence. It's everything he says. I will never, ever wear headphones in public. When you put your headphones in and you're walking down the street listening to your music, you are a fucking target. You are losing one of your most important sensory perceptions. And I've been jumped four times. And every time I was jumped, I didn't see it coming, but I heard it coming. Every time I see someone with their fucking earphones on, it's garbage. It's insanity. You wouldn't walk through life blind. Why are you walking through life deaf? Is your music so important? The so next time you're sitting there thinking, oh, well, I really want to listen to this, and you start getting your headphones out of your bag, Realize you're making yourself target number one. You're advertising to the world that you are not combat ready. So what would you have me do, Andrew Tate? Live my life in fear on a daily basis that I'm gonna be attacked for leaving my house? I'm good. I choose to listen to John Mayer without the paranoia. At least that way, if I get jumped, the beating will be in some part relaxing. Maybe I'm not combat ready, sure, but I also don't often find myself in sudden combat. How many times you been jumped again? And I've been jumped four times. Okay, remind me to never hang out with you because apparently you're target number one without the headphones. If ever I've been jumped, as many times as you in life, I think I've made some bad decisions. Ones that didn't include the choice of whether I wore headphones or not that day. But this is Andrew Tate, Cobra Tate, Top G. Top G, what? Well, that's some bullshit. Everyone knows I'm the only Top G around here. Hashtag, Hashtag top, top Gunner for gunner. life. But he's the new face in the red pill manosphere for young dudes because he gives it to you real. He's brutally honest. Or at least that's the excuse his fans use to defend him for saying really stupid and offensive shit. But before we peer in deeper, I've got some really smart and non-offensive shit to say because this video is 
sponsored by Atlas VPN. I'm moving this week, which can be a little stressful, but you know what's more stressful? Uh, I don't know, not having my internet traffic protected and encrypted? Imagine these boxes behind me are my personal online data. Hey, hey, where are you going with that? Hey, stop, put that down. He took it. That was my bank account login. If only I had been more combat ready by installing Atlas VPN, then my password would have been secured behind several layers of encryption and data breach monitoring. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. You can get a three year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee using my link in the description. That is by far the most affordable VPN deal on the market right now with the same blazing fast speeds and high level security you'd expect from paying for other VPNs. Not to mention just one subscription will protect all of your devices. My favorite use for Atlas VPN is streaming online content locked to different regions. Say I wanted to watch The Office on Netflix, but because of stupid business people and intellectual property rights, they took it off the platform and put it on Peacock. Uh, yeah, NBC, I can't afford another streaming platform. I wasn't even paying for Netflix. I'm on my stepdad's account. Thankfully, with Atlas VPN, I could just change my IP address to LARP as a lumberjack from Canada, and now The Office is available on my stepdad's Netflix account. I don't think he knows I'm logged in still. None of y'all better say shit. Once again, for a limited time, Atlas VPN is running a massive discount of a three-year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And you can claim this exclusive discount by clicking my link in the description below. It really helped me out. So how has Andrew Tate gotten so popular? Has everyone suddenly become fans of his fluffed up kickboxing career from years ago? Or maybe getting involved in the influencer scene and challenging Jake Paul to box and put him on the map? Jake Paul, it's clear to me you are desperate for a reality check. Irony. No, the reason Andrew Tate is so well known right now is because he's the most successful course guru on TikTok. You might be thinking, Gunner, how is that possible? He only has 100K followers. My 13 year old cousin has that. Well, he set up what's called an affiliate program, meaning that if I clicked your exclusive link to sign up for Hustlers University, a prestigious online school for today's hustling youth, then you can make a commission off the sign up. So with promising kids, they can make thousands of IRL Robux, AKA money. Hundreds of new TikTok accounts were made with affiliate links in buy reposting clips of Tate that make me actively lose brain cells. Too smart to read. I know you're sitting there and go, smart people read. No, I need action. I need constant chaos in my life to feel content. I need to be driving a supercar and fucking fighting, fucking a bunch of hoes and champagne and going crazy. I can't just sit there, oh, oh, and the pirate. It's for, it's for people with slow brains. I mention this now because it's one reason as why many of his fans are batshit crazy because they have a monetary incentive in making sure Top G stays on top, that he keeps killing the game, even though Top G seems to openly hate them. <laughs> There's only one of three reasons you're poor. You're either lazy, you're arrogant, or you're slow. Now when I say poor, what I basically mean is less money than me because I, Tate, Lord of Earth, set the bar. I set the difference between rich and poor. My amount of money is the amount of money you need to be rich. If you have less money than me, even by a single cent, you're a fucking brokey, a wagey, a peon, a peasant, a nobody. Interesting premise. <laughs> I suppose life is pretty easy when you arbitrarily set the line for success at exactly the amount of money you have. Andrew Tate's net worth is around $30 million. So that means if you had $29,999,999.99, I'm sorry, but you're poor, a brokey. And the reason again, you don't have as much money as him is because you're either lazy, arrogant, or stupid. You're either lazy, you are arrogant, or you are stupid. If you were none of those three things, you'd be here with me in this room, wouldn't you? But you're not because you are a fucking peon. Yes, every person without $30 million to their name is one of those three things. You're only nine years old being raised by a single mother. <laughs> Pathetic. I bet you get zero bitches. Have fun waiting in line for food stamps and watching your mom collect unemployment checks. I'll be over here in my penthouse yelling at you. But that's the weird thing. It's like all of his fans have daddy issues and enjoy being talked down to. And hey, a little tough love can be good motivation, but he's just being a dick. And he's not even correct about what he's saying. Because when I sit here as the richest person who's ever fucking wasted his time talking to your fucking dumb ass and tells you what to do, you don't fucking listen to me. Oh, well, Tate, you know... Maybe he's wrong about your broke. How can I be wrong when you're in the poor category and I'm in the rich category? I obviously know something you fucking don't. Rich people aren't wrong about anything. You heard it here first. You gain access to this higher level knowledge base of the universe and how it works when you cross that $30 million threshold. Sorry, $30 million and $50 threshold. Andrew Tate just made a course sale. The line kind of keeps moving with his bank account, remember? Now, obviously that sounds fucking stupid, but Tate's fans desperately try to rewrite what Andrew says to be something more nuanced. And that simpletons like us can't see the real meaning behind his words. Only intelligent people can look past 
grasp the brash delivery and understand the truly impactful and pure truth behind his Tate speeches. I think Andrew's polarizing way of speaking is calculated and very well thought out. His brash delivery pushes the weak, fragile, lazy away and attracts the strong ones. The ones who are actually going to do the work and thus get results. Top G. Facts. Only top of the line warrior mentality alphas will stay and continuously let a random dude on the internet bully them and make them feel lesser. Fucking pee off. I hear his fans saying, you don't get it, Gunner. You gotta read in between the lines to see the real message. Well, I'd first say Andrew Tate's anti-reading, so try again. Too smart to read. But okay, I'm a smart guy. I try to look deeper into his sentences and... I can't find anything besides a guy trying to make you feel insignificant for not being as wealthy as him. But Gunner, my fellow Top G, he's motivating us. He's he's motivating me. I'm not saying you can't take motivation from it, but just because that's how you interpreted his belittling words doesn't mean that was ever his intent. I don't think it's particularly healthy to pretend this is any different than a school bully pulling your pants down in class and you thanking him and then paying him $50 to do it again. I think the reason so many dudes attach themselves to Andrew Tate is that he'll say a few things that are real and true. That for whatever social reasons, people people think is brave to say against the mainstream discourse. I realize that sounds vague, perhaps vacuous. Saying vacuous twice in one video, they said it couldn't be done. I'm changing the commentary game. But I'll show you an example of what I mean. Men and women are not the same. We've never been the same. This new think idea that men and women are the same is complete garbage that's been invented, right? For the longest period of human history, men had a role and women had a role. Men and women are not the same. True. Such wisdom you have bestowed upon us, Mr. Tate. Now, I don't think any person with a human brain has ever really denied this, but this is the hook Tate uses to reel in a new viewer to his content. Man and woman different? I thought it was just me. I noticed that too, because I'm smart. Go on, I'm listening. So a woman can't go around fucking people and pretend it's the same as a man running around fucking people. It's absolutely not the same. If I, a man can only cheat if he loves someone else. If I have a woman who I truly love, and I go out and fuck, and I come back to her, and I don't care about her, and I only love my girl. That's not cheating. That's exercise. If she even talks to a dude, it's cheating. Because females are emotionally invested. What, hold on, what What happened? What? How did we get here? What insane leaps have we made in just 20 seconds? Man and woman are different. Therefore, I can cheat my girlfriend as much as I want, and she can't have guy friends. Thank you very much. Good night. I think we missed a few steps in the deductive reasoning department, but nevertheless, here's where we find ourselves. But this is how Andrew Tate has gotten so popular. He's tricked enough people into believing that what he says logically follows. It doesn't. <laughs> but it lets him say crazy stuff that his fans will defend because, well, he said something true in the beginning. Here, I'm gonna give it a go myself. Human beings are born without clothes. Agreed upon premise. Therefore, women, when they hang out with me, should just all be naked all the time. They should just be naked around me, and I get to wear clothes though because I get cold. And because I said so. Impeccable reasoning, they call me the next Aristotle. Now I started getting curious on Tate's background and what led him to be such a terrible person he is today. And I stumbled upon this podcast he was on called Fresh and Fit where we get to peer behind the curtain of his villain origin story. I actually put uh, something on Twitter the other day that went viral and pissed everyone off. Why is it everything I say annoys everybody? <laughs> I'm just trying to live my life, no you know, I, and I just try and say something and everyone's like, what? Nah, nah. So I said the other day that any child who's obsessed with superheroes, that's a warning sign to the father. When I was a child, the only superhero I was interested in talking to or being around was my dad. Like if I saw, if I watched Batman and I go to my dad and say, hey, do you see what Batman did? My dad would sit me down and go, fuck that. Listen to what I've done. Dude, why do people get mad at me for just saying stuff? I'm just doing me. If you like superheroes, go fuck yourself. They're fake heroes, they're not real, grow up. Okay, so we got a young Andrew Tate who looks up to his dad with a seemingly large ego, sounds familiar, and his dad doesn't want his kid looking up to superheroes. Now this caught my attention because I think superheroes are great for kids to look up to, especially in the absence of a good parent as a role model. So Andrew Tate's dad's gotta be a pretty good dude to win his son's admiration over Batman. So let's hear more about him. The one thing my father was fantastic at was prioritizing the mindset of my brother and I above even his relationship with my mother. Mm. So, cause there's so many dudes who end up being cucked out in their own household cause they don't want to argue with the wife and the sons see that shit. I was never raised around that. My dad would disappear to chess tournaments for two months. <laughs> I wasn't raised around that because I wasn't raised. My dad was never home. He can't get cucked out in a household that he doesn't live in. My dad was a genius. He's gone for two months. He walks in the door my mom's like, Emery, where you been? It's been two months. I don't know where you've been. What is this? I've gone through your clothes. There's a picture of some bitch in your da -da -da. And my dad, <laughs> my dad had been home for 42 minutes and he'd just go, sorry, son, she won't shut up. 
walked out again. <laughs> See you in two months. Whoa. That's just who he was. He's like, I ain't sitting there taking shit off a bitch. Oh, so he left you for months at a time. And when he came back and your mom caught him cheating, he called her a bitch and left again. Sick, sick. Yeah, what a guy. Real alpha mentality in the bloodline right there. What'd you claim his reasoning was? Prioritizing your mindset? My father was fantastic at prioritizing the mindset of my brother and I above even his relationship with my mother. How? He left your family. I hate to break it to you, Andrew, but your dad doesn't seem like that good of a guy. And it's kind of making me feel sad for you. No, no, he was proving to me that you can't take shit from a bitch. It was a life lesson. Not him neglecting me and calling my mom a bitch. When I saw this clip, I was elucidated. The puzzle pieces began to click because this is the reason Andrew is the way he is. He has grown up to become his own abusive father to a new impressionable audience of millions. And it's kind of sad. Teaching his fans to value themselves compared to him while he himself appears to have daddy issues. It's one big daddy issue loop. And for someone that preaches supreme alpha confidence and masculine energy, once you look at a trait that he can't control, he gets pretty upset. It's a long story, I'll keep it short, but when I was young, my father said I should shave my hair off because he said when you're a full-grown man, nobody cares what your hair looks like. They're going to care about the quality of man you are as an individual. They don't care what your hair looks like, they care if you're big and strong and rich and successful and interesting and charming and smart. So you don't need hair. Any man who really thinks they need hair to be attractive to females or to matter in the real world has no substance. Right, so they don't care about external things like your hair, but they care about other external things like if you're big, strong, rich, and successful. Of course, those things are at least in some part in your control, but like having hair don't really mean you have substance of character. So it seems more likely that Andrew has a chip on his shoulder, a place where his hair can't reach. And look, I love our bald kings and queens out there, but you gotta own that shit. Not tell a fabricated backstory about how you shaved it off because you agreed with your dad's lesson when all all the old pictures of Andrew show that he had clearly thinning hair and probably shaved it off just because it looked better. Shaved all my hair off because I was talking to someone about how male haircuts are bullshit. And they go, well, you've got a haircut. You've got hair. So I shaved it all off to prove a point. Huh. That's a different backstory on why you shaved your head. Almost like you're lying. It looks like we might have just stumbled upon your biggest insecurity. If you give a shit about your haircut, you have to question yourself why, because girls don't care. So the only reason why is because you want to, I don't know, either impress yourself because you like to sit in the mirror with your dick in your hand, jerking off, measuring with a fucking, I don't know, a, a laser-guided fucking measurement on your own hair, hoping the millimeters are right just before you jizz. Or you're trying to impress other dudes like a homo. Right, okay, so I'm either egotistical for having hair, or I'm gay. No, right, that checks out. My question is, why would gay guys be impressed by hair, but not women? Are haircuts innately a gay thing? Are haircuts gay? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if if haircuts are gay now. Because that means like 98% of people are gay today. So that's that's turning a new leaf, that's great. Anyways, it's pretty obvious that this is a hairy subject for Andrew, sorry. I'll cut to the chase, sorry. Hair or no hair shouldn't affect anyone's character, but let's be honest here, it's a fun way to express yourself, and yes, often can make you look more attractive to other people. Why attack people with hair just because you're follically impaired? Bars. I know why, it's because you're just as insecure as the rest of us, putting on a front of an apex level predator when I think those last jokes might have left you a little teary-eyed. I bet he kick your ass though, is what the intense fans of his only have left to say. And sure man, true, I, I didn't train to be a world-class kickboxer, but I'm still gonna make fun of him. Assuming he's not gonna find and assault me in the middle of the street, I feel pretty secure cracking jokes at his expense, but I will stop wearing headphones from now on and I'll start waving my arms really fast when I walk outside just in case he might attack. There is one more thing I wanted to mention before we go and I didn't really know where to fit it in the video and it's to anyone that says that Andrew Tate is just a persona and I'm falling for the bait by covering it, that this isn't him at all, this is just him putting on a front for attention. Here's a clip of him being asked that and Andrew telling us that this is all just really him. How much percent persona and how much percent of that is actually Andrew Tate personality? I, I think there's a time and a place, right? There's a time and a place for show business, mm -hmm. that's for sure, but it's certainly definitely authentic. I might be delivering things in a, in a more dynamic way depending on the setting, but all in all, that's basically pretty much what I'm like. So unless that's him lying and alpha giga braining us to another dimension, I took everything in this video that he said as his actual thoughts. No matter how over the top he might deliver them. Cat owners are dickheads. Anyway, that's the video today, bottom G's. I apologize for the delay in posting, but with moving, family weddings, and getting third in Ludwig's Creator Contest, my time's been kind of robbed for me lately. I'm set up now though and ready to pump up some bangers for summer, so why don't you hit that like and subscribe button. Be sure to follow me 
on Instagram at Gunner Klein and follow me on Twitch at Gunner TV Live. We'll be resuming streams next week. And this video is probably getting demonetized, especially for that whole jerking off thing he did at the end. Thanks for that, Andrew. So why don't you go check out Atlas VPN with my link in the description or go check out my Patreon where you can support me directly. I would really appreciate it. Thank you guys. With all that said, always gotta be ready. Good day. Don't move too slow. Fine line between love